Hello everyone and no one and welcome once again to the Great Partition in Europa Universalis 4. I am Paragon Saber and uh well I, I actually just don't exist. Fooled ya. In the last episode we saw a great number of exciting things happened. At the end of that, uh, Byzantium taking all of the Bulgarian lands from Wallachia. Hungary called in its own little pseudo-coalition against Nitra. Scotland, uh, I didn't actually comment on this in the last video, it ended very close to the end, uh, the, their war with England ended very close to the end of, end of the video. Took Northumber- took Yorkshire, my lord saber, took Yorkshire from the English, extending their rule over the North British Isles, and they might have actually completed Advance the Frontier. Good on them. And Muscovy locked in what seems an unending war with Kazan and his allies. That being Crimea and his vassal Kiev, and the Timurids, who really couldn't care less. Meanwhile, in the east, we find that Emperor Yan, yes, that's right, Emperor Yan, has seized the Mandate of Heaven from the Ming. The Ming lost too many tributaries, their Mandate went down, and Yan's 14 stack with a one-star general uh, utterly wiped Ming's 16 stack with a two-star general. That's what losing the mandate will do to you, folks. So, with the little recap out of the way, let us restart this. Can't help but wonder how much Nitra is going to lose in this war. All of those Hungarian cores, and they did declare it as a reconquest. That's only 25% AE for taking all of that land. Nitra now full occupied. The end is nigh. Other people in that war being Bosnia and Venice. Bosnia also nearly full occupied. Looks like Ragusa might get, uh, make some gains. Most of Venice's land that isn't named Venice itself also occupied. We do see Athens occupied by Naxos, of all people. did notice this down here. We do have Novgorod and Sweden going at it. Right now, Novgorod winning, having an occupation there on this fort in, okay, what usually is a fort in Abwo. There is one in Viborg, though, so I think that's proof that Novgorod definitely winning this war. Sweden sneaking up and around the top, trying to siege that back, or perhaps uh, force Novgorod to retreat. See how that works out for him. Novgorod very much ahead in troop numbers here, having double Sweden's 10, but you got to be wary of that Swedish combat ability. They are the Baltic Space Marines. Northern Baltic, that is. Who knows, we might even see an AI Prussia down here. The Teutonic Order, still in crab mode. Doing very well against the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. The peace deal is over. Hungary actually being rather lenient with Nitra, at taking what appears to have just been Zemplin, Maramaros, Bihar, and Pozoni. I, I cannot... We've already run into issues with my pronunciation here. I already know that I cannot pronounce, uh, especially Hungarian province names. If anybody who is Hungarian is out there, I greatly apologize. Don't want to be that guy, but I'm, I'm, I'm that guy with uh, regard to your names. It would be the same thing for a lot of Eastern European things. I uh, pull a lot of those from where the sun does not shine. Portugal, having lost its alliance with Aragon due to the Iberian wedding, now facing the might of Castile. Portugal being a, a bit of a deterrent to Castile in the early game, guaranteeing both Leon and Galicia, and how they are paying for it. We have 29,000 Castilians and 12,000 Portuguese, and there's only one way that can end. Fez involved in that war with 7k, but uh, they don't have the navy to get their uh, army over there, and I'm sure they don't expressly want to get all that involved in Iberian matters. Persia at peace for now, but we do see a war down here. Lots of Oman occupied. They are at war with everybody in the... Arabian Peninsula, whose name is not Najd. See a lot of their stuff occupied. Most notably, a couple over here occupied by Hormuz. But uh, Yemen, 
interestingly not going for the capital over there in Muscat. Muscat, a very good province, a center of trade in the Hormuz node, much like Hormuz itself. Gateway to uh, trade into Basra, which then becomes part of the trade flowing through Constantinople and up to Venice. So uh, you take some of the trade away from that, and this area becomes a bit poorer. There's still the uh, Persian node to deal with, which takes some flow in from Samarkand, but that is not the point. Armenia facing the brunt of all of the Anatolian Beyliks, or all of them being Dulkadir, Kandar, and Karaman. Looking like Dulkadir is going to uh, take some land here. Not much more to say about that, really. The Byzantines looking pretty good after that conquest of Bulgaria against Wallachia. Still, I'd call their ally chain iffy. Like, I I'm glad that they allied Crete, because that means Crete's actually getting involved in the game. Aydin, probably the weakest looking of the Beyliks. And Trebizond in a very tenuous position over here. Trebizond with its own decent alliance chain, but they've managed to become a tributary state of the Great Horde from that war in which they attempted to defend Circassia. So I suppose that means they'd bring the Great Horde and his uh, unruly vassals down on anybody who wanted to attack them, but uh, regardless, if anybody's going after the Byzantines, that three stack, probably not going to be all that helpful. We do see some Serbian separatists appear in Sher... Again, I can't pronounce this. Uh, Serbia does have a core there in the, the uh, in base EU4, so of course it's still here in this, this being base EU4 with just a bunch of console meddling. Taking out that Hungarian army easy, easily. Silesia jumping in and saying, no, don't do that to my friend. That said, the Rebels performing admirably until they uh, take the 9 versus a 3 in the shock phase. Meanwhile, Fazan dealing with some noble rebels. Uh, this... This uh, general is my favorite general of all time. I am now cheering for Hashim Saber. Yes! Oh, lovely man. Spoiler alert, in the lost episodes that I recorded but got lost due to file meddling, uh, Fazan actually teamed up with Mazab, took out Tunis, and reformed Tripoli. We'll see if that can happen again. Tunis does not appear to be getting dragged into as many silly wars in the West this time, but still a possibility, although they are allied with both Fazan and Bazab at this moment. Iraq not hurt nearly as badly as I expected by these wars against Dulkadir and Persia. They do lose Basra, a center of trade, but uh, up in the north they only seem to have lost Jazrat ibn, Unar, ibn Umar. <laughs> Uh, pronunciation. The bane of every YouTuber, I think. Muscovy ending the war against Kazan, taking quite a bit. Nizhny Novgorod no longer exists. Kavan Kazan itself and Veda Suvar given over as well. Kasim spit out because of the Separatists. Kazan more than happy to jump on that. The Great Horde under serious assault from Nogai. I'm not even seeing a Great Horde army about, unless it's over here trying to siege things. Negatory. So the Great Horde about to be rather weakened. It really would be sporting of no guy if they were to release these vassals, but nobody has shown an inclination to do that so far. Great Horde rather weakened compared to their starting position, even in this. Still holding on to three unruly vassals in Chernigov, Odiev, and Ryazan, who, if they decided to actually help, could throw together 9,000, 14,000 troops. That's more than no guy has right there. As for other Ruthenian miners, we have Smolensk, allied with Pskov, guaranteed by Novgorod. I'm guessing that's going to invite conflict between Muscovy and Novgorod in the future. No experience there. Polotsk, also allied with Muscovy, would like to take a bite out of their fellow uh, fellow over here. 
Kiev, a vassal of Crimea since close to the start of the game, that has not changed. They've been a far better, better vassal to Crimea than any of the Great Hordes have been to them. The Teutons, either attacking or under attack by Poland Lithuania, that would be the Polish conquest of Lenschitze. And, of course, the Livonians stepping in to defend their ally, as usual. But we do have Mecklenburg sieging down Goldingen. Is that part of this war? I clicked on the wrong person to do that. Yes, Mecklenburg and Lundberg involved in this war. Poland getting some help there. We'll see if they can uh, take some things back for their buddy in Lithuania, as well as for themselves. The troop numbers look good, but, uh, I mean, we've seen Poland lose to the Teutons and their alliances at the start uh, in a normal game, when they're a bit stronger, so... Interesting that. Orléans still around, with very weak alliances. Normandy still alive only in Co, and, uh, also allied with Luxembourg. Really... France could pick those off piecemeal without any issues, but instead choosing to leave Orléans and Nevers alive. Meanwhile, the bigger sub-French states of Gascony and Toulouse, well protected by alliances with Castile. Hungary eating all of Bosnia, well, okay, that's not fair, eating most of Bosnia and taking back some of their Croatian cores. Bosnia now left with home Travunia and Vysoki. Ragusa undoubtedly disgruntled by getting no territory given to them in that war. Venice retains control of Athens and Negropont. Naxos denied. Meanwhile, Epirus, showing some uh, initiative, takes over Achaea. Epirus still enjoying the fruits of that guarantee by Naples who still, well, at this point, is occupying the 7th Great Power spot. Also, Hungary. Hungary has made it up to spot 6. The Mamluks still holding on to spot 5. France at 4. Austria at 3. Persia at 2. Up to 281 development. And Castile still holding on to the number 1 spot. The Iberian Wedding's got to help with that. Definitely do look forward to... Uh, other times when I run the series, and I go in and break up the Iberian Wedding as soon as it fires. Same thing for the PLC. I would really love to see an AI Ruthenia at some point. Doesn't look like that's going to happen in this game, though. Uh, Moldavia is still holding on to this alliance with Muscovy, which could possibly help them with trying to form Romania, though they'll have to face a restored Byzantium. Speaking of restored Byzantium, they've drawn the ire of the Anatolian Balix. They are fighting all of them except for Aiden. I don't think the Byzantines could, can hold on to that. I mean, they might be able to take out the stack of Saruhans here, but both Mentessa and Kandar ready to reinforce. Karaman taking out Aiden, and things not looking good for the Byzantines. Dolkadir over here sieging down Trebizond. Not enough troops to do that, but definitely they are most certainly out of the fight. Crete involved in this war, but... Well, showing why they don't usually get involved in the diplomacy. And it looks like this fight is going to commence. The Byzantines choosing their time well, managing to catch it while Kandar and Mentessa are walking away, and they do send Sarahan packing. Still rather dangerous for them to attempt to cross over and enter Anatolia again. They would be lucky if they were to get out of this war with only the loss of their Anatolian territories. Kandar undoubtedly frustrated by the fact that Karaman wants Bolu. Could prove some, uh, or could cause some strain in that alliance later on. Up in the Holy Roman Empire, it appears that we have Cologne, Trier, and Mines. At war with Cleves, Aachen, and Holland. We saw a uh, pretty good win in that battle there. Looked like that was every force in that war converging and fighting and uh, the Colonian side winning. That is three Holy Roman electors. 
in the same war on the same side. And would you look at that? Cologne, Mines, uh, Trier breaking the pattern, electing Brabant. These two both voting for Austria, though. Were the succession to happen today, Austria would retain the Emperorship. But were Bohemia to maybe shift from Ansbach to Saxony, same thing with Trier, that could change. Byzantium's still sitting here with 19.4k. If they were able to catch those stacks piecemeal, they could do quite a bit of damage and possibly even reverse this war, but staying cautious, staying in Adirn, while Iden's capital slowly sieged down by Karaman. That is something for the Byzantines to be worried about. This fort falls, Iden and his 7,000 men knocked out of the war. Byzantium contributing 15, definitely more than any of one of the Beyliks combined, but uh, they'd much rather have those Idenians on their side. Or maybe it's Idenese, I'm not sure. In the east, I've seen the mandate rising a little bit. Or perhaps not, right now... Emperor Yan with one tributary, that being Korchin who, uh, only holding on to three provinces. Make that two. I thought this little dashed line here was, uh, cutting Hulun beer into two provinces. I mean, one tributary better than none for Emperor Yan, but, uh, if they don't figure out some mandate soon, they are going to go the way of the fellows they stole that from. Ming actually better off now that they don't have the mandate, because they don't have to deal with that awful... Uh, increase to both shock and fire damage taken. They're not in great shape by any means, but they've done well, managing to expand down into what used to be, I believe, Biao and Ning down here. Who knows, maybe we can see the mandate taken back. The Warring States Part 2 will continue on the next episode. Yeah, no, we're not even close to the end of this one. Ayutthaya, one of the lucky couple who managed to keep his vassals. I think I mentioned how he integrated Ligor. Sukathai is still around, though. Uh, those two purported to be some of the most difficult starts in 1.20 and 1.21, as any independence war against Ayutthaya will call in Ayutthaya's tributary overlord, Ming. So, uh, either you'd better hope for the uh, step-neighbor disaster to fire for Ming, or for some sort of divine intervention. I mean, I mentioned divine intervention uh, in the first Byzantine war against the Ottomans. It happened there. And with a player guiding the hand of somebody like that, you never know. In India, Malwa also taking advantage of keeping control of its vassals has now integrated them both. Goodbye to Gondwana and uh, Bundelkhand. I believe that was the vassal up here, yes? Yep. Still have an independent, but known allied Bogulkan down there. Uh, in the lost sessions, they actually managed to seize this uh, pretty decent portion of sub or, uh, central India. Not happening this time. I'm guessing Malwa will want to munch them up, assuming Jarkand or Jonpur does not get there first. Bahmanis proving itself the superior of the usual... Uh, southern Indian majors. Vijayanagar, still in two pieces, has not been able to recover any of their cores except for Madurai, who appears to... I think that might have gone to Vijayanagar because of Separatists. Madurai, formerly very strong down here, I believe they held all of this, has had to spit out Mysore, has lost some to Orissa, has lost Madurai itself to Vijayanagar, and now dealing with Malabari Separatists. Not a fun day for them. The war down here has ended. Kaffa has taken the province of Sadamba, has taken all of what was Hadia. Ethiopia also receiving much of what was the kingdom of Ausa, or northern uh, Adal at this point. Adal trying to recover by culling in its allies to take on Harar, or Harar. Unfortunately, Enorea has fallen afoul of its Kaffan ally and lost the provinces of Jean Giraud and Asosa. Demo also spitten out. Spat out. Pronunciation is hard. Tafilalt on the receiving end of a beating from at least Seuss and Tlemcen, 
possibly Fez as well. Just Seuss and Clemson? Fez actually also in this war on the receiving end. Oh, Portugal. Portugal fallen so far afoul of Castile that they are left with only Lisbon in Europe. I mean, the game counts Madeira and the Azores as part of Iberia, but uh, we both know that Lisbon's the one that matters there, and I'm sure as soon as this truce is up in the year 1484, Castile will come knocking again. Portugal has taken exploration ideas, has escaped down to Cape Verde, but it's gotta be tough trying to maintain a colony when all of your income from your land up here in Iberia is gone. Props again to Scotland. In the lost episodes, the opposite of this happened, with England just crushing Scotland by the year 1485. So, a good alliance with Desmond there, and Glen Drummond. Ah, oh, laddie, he is the hero. I am a disgrace to everybody. I try to accent. <laughs> the next, or latest, uh, rendition of the Polish Teutonic Wars, still ongoing, appears to be slightly in favor of the Teutons. I am mistaken. The Teutons actually ahead in war score, probably because they have Vilnius occupied. Novgorod taking a bunch of territory from Sweden in that war we saw earlier, releasing even more trading cities. We now have the cities of Viborg, Birkanma, and Finnmark, all of whom are more than happy to, uh, well, okay, yes, all of whom are more than happy to transfer their trade power to Novgorod in exchange for some small degree of independence. We have had a change in emperorship. It is, of course, Austria. Saxony not quite able to secure the vote for the HRE Emperor. And uh, who is the latest? Who do we have on the throne? We have the pragmatic sanction in effect. Maria Theresa. Ah, sorry. My bad. We have a Queen Regency for Maximilian, a 245, in favor of Maria Theresa von Julich. No Pragmatic Sanction. France finally taking my advice, going for Orléans. Also fighting Normandy and Luxembourg, but really that's just an opportunity to knock out more than one bird with uh, the same stone. Navarre is actually doing quite well for itself, taking out High No. It appears that the Burgundian inheritance is fireable I wasn't looking. Bourgogne and Charolais going to France, Franche Comte and Cambrai going to Austria. Definitely a bit of a boon for both states. Rest in peace, Charles the Bold. Naples seemingly resting on its laurels for now. They do have alliances with Savoy and Siena. Siena, who by the way has taken over Pisa, but uh, has not made any further expansion into Italy. Epirus still protected by Naples in the form of a guarantee. Looks like Genoa's over here, as is Serbia. Naxos having drawn the ire of Austria, Genoa, Hungary, Serbia, Savoy. Though it appears that uh, Corflu and Florence, at least, are on their side. Where, uh, what, what is this war exactly? That'd be the Austrian reconquest of Gors. Austria going after Styria, and risking the ire of Genoa's trade league. Actually, that seems to be incorrect, because I'm pretty sure I saw Genoa as one of the enemies over here for Naxos. Yes. Okay, Austria, who all is involved against you? Styria, Corfu, Naxos, Ragusa, Urbino, Florence. Okay, guessing that might be Ragusa's trade league then? No, they are just allied with Syria. Syria holding down alliances with Ragusa, Urbino, Florence. Okay, no clue how Naxos is involved in that war. Byzantium under fire from Bulgarian separatists. Constantinople fallen to the white hand of Saruhan. Wonder who I'm cheering for. 
Aiden taken by Mentese as a reward for their service. It's looking like the Eastern Roman Restoration going to be put off a little while longer, or perhaps stopped in its tracks by the uh, combined might of all the Anatolian Beleks. Yeah, the war is over. The Byzantines forced out of Anatolia, Sauruhan given Biga, and Kandar actually taking Optimatoi, Kocheli, but their land split by Karaman taking Bolu. Byzantium probably not going to have a chance or a prayer against these Bulgarians. I mean, they're just, they are still holding on to a 15 stack right now and might just be able to wait them out. But, uh, not looking good for the Eastern Roman Empire. Up here we see Crimea occupied by Zaporozhi. Kiev stepping in on that. Zaporozhi at war with Crimea, Kiev, Imeridi. And this war, only Zaporozhi and Moldavia on the other side. That being Crimea calling in his vassals, finishing the job that he started earlier. Helps that Moldavia having to deal with Volinium Separatists for his earlier conquests uh, over here. Perhaps Podolia and Halix will go back under Galicia Volinia. Still a poor state who has managed to grab precisely zero allies. Sad day for him. And here we go. Muscovy is now at war with Novgorod. Not seeing much of Novgorod's army. Looks like they might have gotten turned back by Yuri. Looks like this attack might have been on Yaroslavl, thus drawing in Novgorod and the Trade League. That is correct. Muscovite, Muscovite, Yaroslavia, Yaroslavia, will Muscovite unification war. <laughs> I am unsure which Casus Belli that uses. Unless, was it a personal union type thing? No, we have a Demidov. That's not a Rurikovic. I have no clue what Casus Belli that is. If anyone ever ends up watching the, these and uh, is able to help me out there, I would uh, be, be pleased to know. Byzantium able to play a ring around the rosy with the Bulgarian separatists and keep uh, taking back all the provinces that the Bulgarian separatists are sieging down. So maybe they will be able to hold, hold on to those lands. Also, always the possibility of this 21 beating this 17 and uh, the Byzantines being set packing. Taken down to only what they started the game with. Better what they start usually U4 with, but a few things uh, can be said about that. The Byzantines going for the attack on the Separatists. Rolls favoring no one here. A 9 versus a 5 in favor of the rebels. An 8 versus a 2 in the shock phase. The Byzantines being sent home. That said, they are likely to recover their manpower far faster than these rebels, assuming the Byzantines didn't lose it all in the war against all the miners. Still gotta be rooting for Saruhan. They've also secured an alliance with the Mamluks, which will undoubtedly deter any aggression toward the White Hand. Genoa being nice to the Byzantines, attempting to engage the Separatists for them, or more likely just stumbling into them. The Bulgarians uh, really laughing at that attempt. Lucky for Genoa that they weren't stack wiped. Zaporozhye actually being given to Kiev. Crimea really just doesn't want to control this estuary. They, they are having none of it. I mean, giving it to Kiev is uh, closer than leaving it in Zaporozhye's hands, but this war is over. I do not see any two, uh, territorial changes on the behalf of the Teutons or the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. The crab continues to uh, scuttle, I suppose. Novgorod's destruction delayed by their sh slightly stronger starting position, and they are attempting to get a siege done on Mus uh, Moscow itself. 
But that is a Muscovite 25 stack with Yuri up there in Olenets. The, uh, ah, there goes the timer. Didn't catch it this time. Well, we'll have to hold that thought. It is now November of 1472, and the world's still rather shattered. Thank you all for watching. This has been The Great Partition. I've been Paragon Saber, and uh, thanks again.